हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज स्ट्रक्चर इंजीनियरिंग कोर्स माय सेल्फ सुरेंद्रनाथ एस जाधव असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर सिविल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट के आई कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग कोल्हापुर टुडे वी विल डिस्कस द यूनिट नंबर वन दैट इज द कंबाइंड डायरेक्ट एंड बेंडिंग स्ट्रेस दिस यूनिट इज स्प्लिट इन नंबर ऑफ लेसन सो टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द फर्स्ट लेसन दैट इज द रेक्टेंगुलर कॉलम सब्जेक्टेड टू द लोड which is eccentric to the one axis only so first introduction about the diet and bending stress we discussed about the direct stress and bending stress alone so direct stress alone produces in the body when it is subjected to the axial tensile or compressive load bending stress is produced in the body when it is subjected to the bending moment only but in the actual cases both axial load and bending moments are acting on the body simultaneously if body is subjected to the axial and bending moment then both direct and bending stresses will be produced in the same body in this lesson we are discussed the column having the cross section rectangular so consider one column subjected to the compressive load p along the axis of column so we are considering capital a as a area of cross section of the column p is the compressive load acting on the column sigma not is the intensity of the stress induced in the column due to the load p so we can calculate the stress sigma not is equal to load divided by cross section area so it is nothing but the p divided by a and this is the nothing but the direct stress and this direct stress is produced due to load p which will causes the compressive stress on the cross section of the column which intensity will be uniform across the cross section of the column here you can see so intensity of the stress is uh, is uniform across the column section so stress here you can see is rectangular stress variation across the column section is rectangular we will discuss the if the load is acting on the eccentric to the column now consider column subjected to the compressive load p whose line of action is at a distance of small e from the axis of column it is nothing but the eccentric load so small e is the eccentricity of the load that is the distance from the axis of column the eccentric load will causes the direct stress and bending stress same time on the column section we will show here so first uh, column subjected to the compressive load p with the eccentricity small e from the axis of the column so here you can see this uh, eccentric load we are adding two more loads that is the same amount of load p load acting on the both the sides in downward side and on and in upward side so p load acting downward and upward at the uh, axis of the column so now we are splitting this total three loads okay with the two parts so first part where we are considering only p load acting on the axis of the column that p load will produce direct stress on the column another part p load are uh, separated with the distance e will produce the couple okay that is nothing but the movement on the column section so first part is nothing but the produces the direct stress and second part is produces the bending stress due to the movement so now we are uh, considering one rectangular column with the eccentric load p with the eccentricity small e and having uh, width b and depth d so load is eccentric with the respect to y y axis okay and that eccentric load is uh, only with the one axis only so eccentric load causes the direct and bending stress p is the eccentric load acting on the column 
small e is the eccentricity of the load small b is the width of the column small d is the depth of the column and due to this eccentric loading uh, direct stress will be uh, induced in the body that is the sigma naught is the direct stress sigma b is the bending stress so we required the cross section of the column so area of the cross section of the column a, capital a it is nothing but small b multiplied by d so movement due to eccentric load it is nothing but movement capital m is equal to load multiplied by eccentricity so load is p here and eccentricity is small e the direct stress sigma naught can be calculated by using the formula that is the load divided by area so sigma naught is equal to load divided by area which is equal to capital p divided by capital a it is the first equation that is the direct stress and that direct stress is uniform along the cross section of the column next is the bending stress sigma b due to the movement at any point of the column section at a distance of small y from the neutral axis y y is given by the fregerer formula which is m by i is equal to sigma by y so so bending stress from this fregerer formula we have, we will get that is the m by i multiply by y or m by z this is the our second equation so in the bending equation we require the moment of inertia for the rectangle section about the neutral axis y y so moment of inertia i is equal to db cube by 12 z is the section modulus that is i by y and after putting these two values in the bending stress equation so bending stress equation becomes plus minus m upon db cube by 12 multiply by y so after rearranging all these terms we will get the bending stress is equal to plus minus 12 m divided by db cube multiply by y so in this equation uh, variable is y so bending stress is depends on only y other terms are constants so at the extreme edge of the section the y value is maximum so that y value for the rectangle section is b by 2 so bending stress at the extreme edge is nothing but the sigma b is equal to plus minus 12 m divided by db cube and here we are replacing y is equal to b by 2 so equation becomes plus minus 6 m divided by db square so here m is nothing but the movement due to the eccentric load so m is equal to p multiply by e and area of cross section is nothing but the b multiply by d so here putting all uh, in the equation you will get the final equation that is the bending stress sigma b is equal to plus minus 6 p e divided by a b so here we are calculating the resultant stress on the extreme edge of the column we will get this by algebraic sum of sum of direct stress and bending stress so why we are considering positive and negative in previous equation in bending stress so when we are considering y is positive when when we are considering y is negative so y is taken as a positive when the load is same side of the y y axis okay so here in this case you can see p eccentric load is on the right side of the y y axis so y is considered as a positive on right hand side and y is considered as a negative on left hand side as load is placed on the right hand side of the y y axis so in previously we know the direct stress is compressive one due to, due to the load is acting compressive on the column section on right hand side of the y y axis bending stress is compressive as load is acting on the right hand side on the left hand side of the y y axis bending stress is 
टेंसाइल साइन कन्वेंशन कंसिडर्ड एज कॉम्प्रेसिव स्ट्रेस इज पॉजिटिव एंड टेंसाइल स्ट्रेस इज निगेटिव सो स्ट्रेस इज मैक्सिमम एंड मिनिमम ऑन द एक्सट्रीम एज बिकॉज वाई वैल्यूज आर वेरिंग फ्रॉम प्लस माइनस बी बाई टू पल वी आर कंसिडरिंग फॉर द करंट एग्जाम्पल लेफ्ट हैंड साइड ऑफ द एक्सिस ऑफ द कॉलम दैट इज वाई वाई एक्सिस वी आर कंसिडरिंग निगेटिव बी बाई टू एज अ वाई वैल्यू एंड द राइट हैंड साइड पॉजिटिव बी बाई टू एज अ वाई वैल्यू सो स्ट्रेस ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड इज मिनिमम एंड स्ट्रेस ऑन राइट हैंड साइड इज मैक्सिमम सो मैक्सिमम स्ट्रेस ऑन बी सी एच एंड मिनिमम स्ट्रेस ऑन ए डी एच सो इफ वी ड्रॉ द स्ट्रेस वेरिएशन ग्राफ डायग्राम सो वी विल गेट द स्ट्रेस डायग्राम लाइक दिस सो लेफ्ट हैंड एज सिग्मा मिनिमम इज देयर एंड ऑन राइट हैंड एज सिग्मा मैक्सिमम इज देयर सो नेक्स्ट मैक्सिमम स्ट्रेस ऑन बी सी एज इट इज द अल्जेब्रिक सम ऑफ डायरेक्ट स्ट्रेस एंड पेंडिंग स्ट्रेस सो सिग्मा मैक्स इज इक्वल टू सिग्मा नॉट प्लस सिग्मा बी सो पुटिंग हेयर द वैल्यूज फ्रॉम द इक्वेशन वन एंड टू सो सिग्मा मैक्स इज इक्वल टू पी बाय ए प्लस सिक्स पी ई डिवाइडेड बाय ए बी सो इन दिस इक्वेशन पी बाय ए इज टेकन आउट एज अ कॉमन सो सिग्मा मैक्स इज इक्वल टू पी बाय ए इन ब्रैकेट वन प्लस सिक्स ई डिवाइडेड बाय बी and we can calculate the minimum stress on adh that is the algebraic sum of direct stress and bending stress so direct stress minus bending stress is here for minimum stress sigma minimum is equal to sigma not minus sigma b so from equation 1 and 2 you will get the sigma minimum as p by a 1 minus 6e divided by b for the rectangle section i hope all of you understand the how to calculate the sigma max and sigma minimum for the rectangular column with the eccentricity small e okay so now we will discuss the numericals on the same concepts so first numerical is a rectangular column of width 200 mm and thickness 150 mm carries a point load of 240 kN at a eccentricity of 10 mm as shown in figure determine the maximum and minimum stress on the section so here you can see the figure on right hand side uh, that p is the load that is the 240 kN acting eccentric with the eccentricity as 10 mm width of the column is 200 mm and depth is 150 mm okay so we can calc we have to calculate the maximum and minimum stress so we know the formula for the maximum stress as sigma max is equal to p by a 1 plus 6e divided by b put the value p as 240 kN p is nothing but 240 into 10 raised to 3 newton area as 200 multiplied by 150 small e is eccentricity as 10 mm and b width of the column is 200 mm after putting and calculating the sigma max you will get the value for sigma max is 10.4 newton per mm square similarly for the minimum stress sigma minimum is equal to p by a 1 minus 6e divided by b put all the values in this equation after calculating you will get the 5.6 newton per mm square so you can see in this figure load 240 kN is on right hand side of y y axis so you will get the maximum stress on right hand side of the y y axis and minimum stress on left hand side of the y y axis on extreme edges so put these two values on the extreme edges and draw the graph you will get this graph that on the left hand side sigma minimum as 5.6 newton per mm square and on right hand side maximum stress sigma max is 10.4 newton per mm square this is the first numerical second numerical on the same numerical the minimum stress on the section is given as zero and for that we have to calculate the eccentricity of the point load 240 kN acting on the rectangular column 
also calculate the corresponding maximum stress on the section okay so in the previous example we calculate the maximum stress and minimum stress in this case we have to find out the eccentricity which will produce the minimum stress as zero so as in this figure load is on right hand side of the yy axis so minimum stress on the left hand side of the yy axis so we know the minimum stress formula sigma minimum is equal to p by a 1 minus 6 e divided by b so in this uh, equation sigma minimum we have to put is 0 for 0 stress 0 minimum stress we have to find out the eccentricity so load is 240 kilonewton area is 200 multiplied by 150 mm e we have to find out and b is 200 mm in this equation eccentricity is unknown after calculating you will get the eccentricity as 33.33 .33 mm on the right hand right hand side of the yy axis so now for the same load and eccentricity 33.33 .33 mm we have to calculate the maximum stress produced or induced in the column so maximum stress is p by a 1 plus 6 e divided by b so after putting all these values in this equation we can calculate the maximum stress as 16 newton per mm square so on the left hand side sigma minimum is there and on the right hand side sigma maximum is there so after plotting you will get this type of graph on the left hand side sigma minimum is 0 on right hand side sigma maximum is 16 newton per mm square I hope all of you understand the concept of uh, diet and bending stress on the rectangular column with the eccentric load on one axis only. Thank you. On the next lesson, we will discuss the uh, rectangular column subjected to the eccentric load which is eccentric with the both the axis. Thank you.